Uh, hi. Hi. Hey, listen. I uh, <laughs> uh, promise you won't be insulted if I say this. Promise? You know? uh, but uh, honestly, I, I sure wish you'd have an affair with me. You know, really? You know? By the way, what, what's your name? Dagmar. Well, what do you say, Dagmar, huh? What do you say? I don't even know you. Well, who are you? What do you do? Well, you're going to break up when I tell you. Honestly, you are. You know? <laughs> you're really... You know why? Because, I mean, you, you can't... I don't look like one. I'm not dressed like one, right? I don't even have an accent, right? And when I tell you, you're going to say, wow, we, you know? You know? But you ready? Hold on to your hat. Here it is. I'm a dictator. <laughs> yeah! Honestly, goodness. I, I, I really wouldn't lie about it. It's, it's something that you... I, it's something you just gotta tell the truth about. When you're one, you're one. I'm a dictator. And uh, you know what a dictator does, and that's it. I run the country. It's me. I'm the big schmear, and uh, you know, like everything I say really goes, and that's it, really. Yeah? Well, then I guess I'm forced to have an affair with you. No! That's the whole bit. That's the whole bit. Now, you see, I don't want you that way. I just don't want you that way. I want you to have an affair with me because you want to. See? That's the difference. Different kind of dictator. Not because you're afraid of me. Got it? Now, what do you say? I will have an affair with you. No, you don't have the idea yet. No, you see, you're in fear, you poor kid. Look, you're shaking all over. Look at you like jello. There's nothing to fear if you if you truly want to refuse me. Honestly, go ahead. Anything you say. Don't believe everything you read about dictators. I'm a good dictator. I'm a good one. One of the good ones, you know. Uh, you, you just compare me to all the others. I'm really great. Now, now, what do you say? Well, when you put it that way, we really don't know each other very well. That's right. See, now you're getting there. Now you're being honest. I like that. Go and ahead. I think we should like each other. And I don't like you. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's. Just great. You're a, real, you're a real sweet kid. I dig you. Go ahead, go ahead. And therefore, with you. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, that's great. You know, I just, it, it just, I, get, I feel a chill. I really do. Uh, now, let me get this straight. Just let me straighten out the whole situation. You don't want to sleep with me. Is that right? Right. All right, great. Now, then how would you like to be stood up against the wall and shot? <laughs> I will take it. Oh, good, good. I know she changed her mind about the whole thing. <laughs> Miss Castello, would you mind putting those test tubes down for a moment? There's something I have to say. Yes, sir. I have to tell you now, I wasn't going to, but when I saw your body silhouetted against the light of your Bunsen burner, <laughs> I knew I had to. Miss Castello, I think I've fallen in love with you. Why, Professor... I... No, don't say anything, please. The question I've asked myself is, am I capable of loving a woman, or is it nothing but a physical desire of a man for a woman? As a scientist, I must know the answer. Therefore, my next experiment, or I should say our experiment, is me and you. Of course, you're not obligated to do this, Mr. Castello. No, anything for science. Sir. Bully for you. <laughs> I knew that would be your answer. Now, I would like to start on the normal conditions. So, would you please step away from the Bunsen burner <laughs> and button up the blouse a little bit. I'd like to start from scratch. <laughs> now, Miss Castello, would you please come and sit beside me over here on the couch? Yes, sir. Good. Let me make a note of this. <laughs> no reaction when sitting near the woman. Now, Miss Castello, would you allow me to put my arm around you? Please do, sir. Well, I, uh... I feel a slight reaction and a constriction of the vocal cords. <laughs> but uh, not sufficient enough yet to impair speech. Now, Miss Castello, I will kiss you and I would like you to return the kiss. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, I feel a full reaction. And the speech is entirely impaired. I also feel a lot warmer. <laughs> Please feel my head, Miss Costello. I think you have a slight temperature, sir. Shall I get a thermometer, sir? No time for that now, Miss Costello. We must kiss like that again, only this time harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My eyes are blurring and they're tearing and there's cold perspiration, the shaking of the limbs. I think I feel a reaction too, sir. There's no turning back now, Miss Castello. Oh, yes, sir. But I must know, so you must tell me. Yes, quickly, what is this? If this works, how are you going to make it into a vaccine? <laughs> <laughs>
And this particular nut treats a woman like a product. <laughs> I only have a minute before I go down to the television studio. Yeah. What is it, Harrington? Look, I'm too busy to go into it in detail, but it's about us. I think we should do something big together. Until now, we've only done little unimportant things, like holding hands, kissing. But you've proven yourself, Lorraine. And as far as I'm concerned, your rating has gone up with me ten points. Yes, sir, you're ready for me, Lorraine. Oh, thank you, Harrington. No, I'm not making any promises, Lorraine. But if you work out, I'll pick up your option, baby. You're sweet, Harrington. And I might add, I intend to give you every break I can. I suppose you meet me at my apartment and say, eight o'clock. We'll put it on the launching pad and see if it goes up. <laughs> hey, I don't understand. Lorraine, you're not tuned in on my channel when I say we'll put it on the launching pad and see if it goes up. I mean, we'll run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. Oh, how could I be so stupid? I'll get that eight sharp. We'll martini it and then we'll doodle it out on a tablecloth. <laughs> We're going to doodle on a tablecloth? Uh, just a figure of speech, Lorraine. <laughs> I should hope so. Now, I'd have to tell you, Lorraine, that if we're compatible, you and I will go the whole season, 39 weeks. I'll 39. do my best, Harry. Ah, uh, you'll be wonderful, Lorraine. you got to face the figure for it. I've never been wrong yet. I'll give you everything I've got. I know you will, Lorraine. I'll have my secretary draw up contracts if you like. i got to run. Remember, 8 o'clock. <laughs> Bye-bye. Kiss, kiss. <laughs> He walks over to a complete stranger sitting at the bar, and he says, Oh, are you beautiful? Your hair, deep blue eyes, soft, inviting lips. What a figure. The shape of your calves, your thighs. You're lovely. What's your name? How would you like if I called a cop? <laughs> now, this time, there's no fooling around. It's the same situation. The guy walks over to a stranger. No blonde girl sitting there, sequin, beautiful dress, gorgeous. Everything's just beautiful about her. And he walks over and he says the same thing. And he says, oh, are you a beautiful girl. Long blonde hair, deep blue eyes, soft, inviting lips, a full rounded figure, beautifully shaped legs. You're so lovely. What's your name, honey? Alan Funt. Smile, you're on candid camera. 